Praise the Lord. Thank you, Kevin, for leading us in, in worship today. Wasn't that good, church? Yes. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the Word, uh, I don't know if anybody follows us on our Facebook page or, or not. I, I know a few people do. But uh, this week, uh, I posted a challenge on our Facebook page, uh, the Bethel Temple Facebook page. And that's for us to read the book of John during the month of December leading up to Christmas. Book of John consists of 21 chapters. So as we read the book of John, we're preparing our hearts to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And I can't think of a better way for us to prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus than to read the life story of the one that we're celebrating. And um, I, I kind of posted this challenge uh, selfishly. There's, there's part of it that's for me. And that is, for the last number of Christmases that I can remember, I, I kind of struggled to get into the Christmas spirit. I, I kind of struggled to get into celebrating Christmas. And I, I know what the problem is. I get so much f frustration and distraction by the way the world celebrates Christmas that uh, I just want to forget about the whole thing but the thing is it's, it's about Jesus that we're celebrating and friends there's no better way for us to prepare our hearts to celebrate Christmas than to read the word to get to know Jesus better so I, I posted that challenge and what we're attempting to do is each day, Monday to Friday, leading up to December 21st, on Saturday and Sunday, we're not going to do it, but Monday to Friday, I'm going to share a very, very, very brief devotional out of whatever chapter we're reading. So tomorrow, I'm going to share briefly out of John chapter 6, and uh, just kind of sharing with you some of my reflections from that chapter and just encouraging you to, to read that chapter as well as we prepare our hearts uh, to celebrate Christmas. So ju just something that I, I wanted to uh, share uh, with you. So if you have your Bibles, if you want to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. So the wisest man that ever lived uh, penned the words that we see here in Proverbs 3, verse number 5. And the wisest man, Solomon, he's instructing us here, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, God, and he will make our paths straight. Amen? Amen. As we trust in the Lord, He will make our paths straight. When, when I think about the Christmas story, one word that comes to mind is trust. Think about it. Mary, Joseph, the wise men, even the shepherds, they had to trust God. They had to trust in the message that the shepherds had to trust in the message that God sent with the angels that it was of God. Mary and Joseph, they had to trust in God's leading to go and do uh, what they were called to do. Uh, the wise men, they had to trust that they were following the right star and that God was directing them to where they were to go. It, the Christmas story is all about trust. The next week, uh, we're going to share about how the wise men and how the shepherds had to trust God. On uh, December uh, the 19th, we're going to see how Mary and Joseph, how they had to trust God. But today, I want to encourage us today. I want to encourage each of us. To put our trust in the Lord. Put our trust in the Lord. That, that seems so easy 
uh, sometimes to hear. Put our trust uh, in the Lord. It, it seems so easy sometimes to trust in what we know. It seems so easy to trust in what we can see, in what we can understand. But the problem is, our understanding is never, ever enough, is it? For all our knowledge and all our understanding, we can't see things from heaven's perspective. There's, we, we can never see things the way that God sees things. The prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 55, verse number 8 to 9, reminds us that God's ways, friends, are far above our ways. And God's thoughts are far beyond our thoughts. They are like the heavens that tower above the earth. That's what we're reminded in Isaiah 55. That God's thoughts, God's ways, they're not our ways. And friends, God's aspirations for our lives, they're far beyond our comprehension. Uh, we can't even begin to grasp the great plan that God is unfolding in us and through us. We're not capable of seeing the end from the beginning and knowing where uh, things are headed. Instead, we're charged, we're instructed to simply trust God. It's, and we're to remind, we're to remain in a place of dependence upon God. David said, in Psalm 37, verse number 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, David's promise there that our steps are ordered by God, this brings us a, a wonderful sense of security in that passage of Scripture. David is saying that if I... If I, if we will trust him, if we will depend upon him, if we will let him, he will direct our paths and he will order our steps. Then in verse 24 of Psalm 37, verse 24 of Psalm 37, the psalmist celebrates that truth by saying of the man that allows God to order his steps, David says this, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord uphold him with his own hand. David goes on and he provides even more evidence in Psalm 37 of the security of depending on God when he says in verse number 25, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. There, there's wonderful simplicity in us depending upon God. Friends, when we put our faith, when we trust Him, we don't have to worry about tomorrow. Isn't, isn't that great that when we trust in God, we don't have to worry about uh, tomorrow? And I, and I don't know about you, but uh, wow, do I spend way too many days worrying uh, about uh, tomorrow. Worrying about uh, what the future uh, may hold. Um, I think I'm about to turn 45 in January. I think. It's either 44 or 45. And I was having this conversation with Tracy yesterday that, Tracy, in 20 years, I'm supposed to be retired. In 20 years, Tracy, I'm going to have a 20-year-old that we're going to be trying to put through university. How am I going to be retiring and putting a 20-year-old through university at the same? And honestly, 
I could either, in that moment, I could either cry or laugh. Because <laughs> it, was, it was kind of one of those two extremes that, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, Tracy? The, this is, like, it, it was, I, I was just making a whole big mountain out of a molehill. And here I am, I'm, I'm worrying about tomorrow. I'm worrying about what's going to happen in 20 years. Rob, get through today. Don't worry about what's going to happen in 20 years. Well, man, I, I, it, if I have it my way, we're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. Now, it's not my way. It's definitely not my way. But uh, I might not have to worry about it because that trumpet could have sounded long before we get to that. Tr All right, we're going down a rabbit hill. We're going to just shoot that rabbit right now. We're not going to go down that trail. <laughs> so when we put our trust, when we put our full faith and our trust in him, we don't have to worry about tomorrow. We don't have to worry about what the future is going to bring. Because while the future, friends, while it might seem uncertain in the moment, just as how am I going to retire and put a daughter through university at the same time, that seems very uncertain how that's going to happen. But even though things seem uncertain, Oh, hallelujah. The one who holds the future, he never fails. Amen? Amen? Things seem uncertain from the perspective of Rob the Grove. But God's just laughing. He's, like, he's laughing. He's like, Rob, you are worried. I got this under control. I got all this under control, Rob. You're just, you're worried about this? He's, he's laughing. He's either laughing or he's very upset that I'm doing one or one or the other. But so while things seem very uncertain to us, oh, I try. I rejoice that the one who holds the future, he has it under control, and he's trustworthy. Amen. He's trustworthy. The prophet Isaiah tells us in Jeremiah chapter ten, verse number twenty-three. O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Friends, I'm not even capable. I'm not even capable of directing my own paths. That's what the word's telling me. I, I'm not even capable of making my own plans. I, I can't do it. I need to be consulting the Lord. I need to be seeking Him. I need to be hearing from Him. I need Him to direct my paths. We need Him to direct our paths. We, I, I love to sit with our church and strategize about the future of our church. I love to talk about the future of our church. I love to make plans for the future of our church. I, I enjoy doing that stuff. But friends, if our strategies and our plans and our ideas and our agenda, if they are not coming from the very throne of God, they're nothing. Absolutely nothing. And we, we need to strategize. We need to plan. We, we need to try to organize uh, ourselves as a church for the future. But the most important thing that we need to do before we even consider doing that is spending a significant amount of prayer seeking the Lord and asking the Lord, Lord, what is your plans for our church? What's the few, what is your future hold for our church? So, we need to be trusting in the Lord. We need to be trusting in his plans. And church, if we will put our trust in God, if we will declare our dependence upon him, 
Well, then we'll see the truth of Psalm 23 lived out. If I will trust in God, if I will depend upon God, then I'm going to see Psalm 23 come to be a reality in my life. And we will become, we will see Psalm 23 become a reality in our life. Psalm 23 tells us that he will direct my paths. If I'm trusting in God, if I'm telling God that I'm depending on him, well, then he's going to direct my paths. He will establish my going out and my coming in. He will watch over me and direct me and bring me to a place that he desires for my life. All I have to do, all we have to do is trust him and follow him wherever he leads us. Because friends, where he leads us, where he leads me, where he leads you, where is it? It's a place by still waters and green pastures. And when he leads us through the valley of the shadow of death, his rod and his staff, they're there to protect us. And when he leads me to the place where my enemies encompass me, he prepares a table for me in the midst of my foes. He anoints my head with oil and my heart with gladness. And he causes my cup to run over. Friends, I, I've learned a few things in the course of my short life. And one thing I know is that if I will trust in God, that he will never, ever, 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 ever lead me wrong. He will never leave me nor forsake me. He will bring me to a valley, but he's not going to bring me to a valley that he can't get me through. He will never place me in a storm that he didn't command. And I know for some you're wondering, Pastor Rob, why, why would God cause a, a storm to, to happen? Well, friends, you, you walked with me through a very, very, very tough uh, 24 months for my family. You, you've, you've witnessed what, what, we've, what we went through. And it was a storm. And I can remember when I shared with one of the board members here, they didn't tell me right away, but I'm sharing with them, and I'm sharing with them devastating news, but they're rejoicing. They're rejoicing. They're, they're not rejoicing to me publicly, and, but they're rejoicing because, praise God, he's going to come to Calvington. He's coming to Calvington. He's going to come to Calvington, and he's going to live in Calvington, and he's going he's to be our pastor. Well, back in October and November, when the storm was, was brewing, friends, <laughs> I was not rejoicing. I was not uh, praising the Lord for the storm that, that we were going through. And as we were going through it, I didn't see the hand of God in it. But looking back now, friends, I see something that the enemy meant to destroy us. God has turned around and he's made it something good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes when we go through storms, we're wondering, why is this going on? And sometimes the best thing that we can do is just grab onto the wheel and hold on. Honestly, just grab onto the wheel and, and hold on. And I don't know about you, but when I'm going through a storm, when I grab onto the wheel, I'm not holding on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do whatever I can to, to get it back on the road. I, I, I had a car accident probably, I think it's been almost 10 years ago now. And um, I did what I'm always told not to do. That when you're, when you're in the midst of a car accident and you're going down into the ditch, you're told, just hold on to that wheel. Just hold on straight. Well, now at Rob LaGrove, 
Oh no. I had to try to get myself out of that as quick as I could. Well, what did that end up doing? At least flipping the car at least three or four times. I don't know how many times by the way. It, it was at least three or four. And uh, well, friends, sometimes that's what happens when we're going through the storm. If we just grab the wheel and hold on, God's going to lead us through it. But if we grab onto that wheel, we're trying to steer ourselves out of it. Well, it's just like life. We're just going to make a bigger mess of it. Sometimes we just go, oh, I'm sounding like a country song. What's that? <laughs> What's that one? Jesus take the wheel or something? <laughs> but sometimes though, we, we got to do that. We just got to grab, we just got to grab the wheel and just hold on tight and say, Jesus, lead me, guide me, uh, direct me. Friends, he will never lead us wrong. Amen? Then he will never lead us wrong. And if we, when we're going through a storm, when we're going through a storm, he will never lead us to face our trials on our own. He'll never lead us to face our storm uh, on our own. Because he's our strength. Amen? And he's our shield. He's our fortress. He's our rock. He's our deliverer. Friends, that's who our God is. That's our God. They, these aren't just simply words in a book. They, they can't be just words in a book if, if we're just reading it for information. But friends, when we let that word that he is our shield, he is our rock, he is our shelter, he is our fortress, when we let those words move from our head to our heart, well, then they become not just words in a book, but they become words that we can stand upon. <laughs> Friend, that, friends, that's who our God is. He's our shield. He's our rock. He's our strong fortress. He's the Lord of our life. And today, I want to encourage us to depend upon him. Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 12, verse number 24, consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They neither, they have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Then in verse number 27 of Luke 24, Jesus says, for us to consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet Solomon in all his glory was never arrayed in such beauty or splendor as them. Friends, if God clothes the grass, if he provides for the raven, how much more will God take care of us? Amen? And friends, I, I know it sounds too, too simple, but it's the truth. If God takes care of everything around us, the nature that we see all around us, if he takes care of that, how much more is God going to take care of us? We just need to trust him. We just need to trust him. And I want to encourage us this morning that we would heed the words of Solomon. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. Maybe today you need to turn some things over to him. Let me encourage you to make a, a declaration of dependence upon the Lord. Maybe you need to step up and tell God, I'm depending on you, God. I need your direction. I need your guidance. I need your hand to lead me and your spirit to guide me. I need the strength that only comes from you. I need the blessing that comes from your presence. I need you, God. Talking about us trusting uh, in the Lord with all our heart, Solomon said in Proverbs 28, verse number 26, 
that he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. The unfortunate truth is, today, I'm either trusting in God or I'm going to trust in myself. The same is true for all of us. Today and every day, we have a choice. Am I going to trust God or am I going to trust myself? Am I going to trust God's leading or am I going to trust my instincts? Am I going to trust God's direction or am I going to led, be led by my emotions? Am I going to trust God's word, the source of truth? Or am I going to trust in my fear that I'm feeling in the moment? What am I going to trust in today? That's a choice that we make each and every day. Am I going to trust in God or am I going to trust in myself? And the first, according to Solomon, is a wise choice of action. It's wise that we would choose to trust in God. The second, however, for us to trust in ourselves, in our own instincts, in our own ideas, in our own agenda, that's foolish. It's foolish for us to trust in ourselves rather than to trust in God. It takes a fool to evaluate their way over God's way. It takes a fool to evaluate their understanding over God's understanding. And that foolishness, every, every, every time, it always ends in disaster. Amen? We, we've been there. I, I've been there. <laughs> I, I'm not afraid to admit that I, I've, been, I've been there. I've been that fool that trusted in my own leading and my own direction and it ended in disaster time and time and time again. And I've also been there where I've seen that I've trusted in God and it's always led to something good. Amen? Amen. Years ago I, I read an article that was entitled 178 Seconds to Live. In the article the author told of a study that was conducted involving 20 non-commercial pilots. These non-commercial pilots, they had excellent flight records during the day. But they didn't have any kind of instrumental training of any kind. Uh, these kind of pilots, uh, they would fly a, a private aircraft and they would do quite well as long as they were able to avoid flying at night or flying through uh, thick storm clouds. And as a matter of fact, they were, uh, they would carefully plot and plan their course in order to avoid the possibility of flying into low or no vision situations. Because flying by sight is completely different, I'm told, or the author tells me, than flying by uh, our instruments. So for the purpose of a study, uh, each of these pilots, they were placed in a flight simulator and they were instructed to keep the aircraft under control as they flew through thick clouds, and stormy weather. The study concluded that on average, it took 178 seconds for them to crash the plane, killing themselves and killing all that were on board. It took these seasoned pilots, these seasoned pilots, they had years and years of experience less than three minutes, to destroy themselves once they lost the visibility and were forced to rely on their uh, instruments. 
When faced with the choice of trusting their own instincts or trusting the instruments, their human nature kicked in uh, and they placed their trust in their instincts. And without exception, the study showed that they crashed. So when they followed their instincts and not their instruments, they, they crashed. And friends, I want, I want us to know Today, we can't afford, we can't afford as a church and as individual believers, we can't afford uh, to rely on ourselves to work things out. We can't afford to learn upon, lean upon our own understanding. We can't afford to do that as believers. Bethel Temple can't afford to lean simply on what we think we know and what we think might be best. Perhaps it might work for a while. Perhaps we will do okay as long as we can see clearly what lays ahead. But we all know, we, we've, all, we, we've all experienced enough life that we know however a time is going to come, it has come, and it will come again, where sooner or later the storms of life, they obscure our vision. And it becomes impossible for us to see clearly what the next step should be in those times. It's absolutely essential, absolutely essential that we've learned to place our trust in God. When we go through the storms, if we hope to survive those times in life, we simply must learn what it means. We need, and we need to learn it now before the storm comes. We need to learn what it means to not trust in our own understanding. Because friends, our understanding is simply not good enough. Our reasoning, our knowledge won't keep us safe. We need God. We need his direction. We need him to order the steps of our lives and of our church. And we need him to direct our steps as a church and as individuals. Today, I would encourage you, put your trust in God. It's the only way that your faith will survive the storms and the valleys that are unavoidable this side of glory. Jeremiah declared in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 7 to 8, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be a tree planted by waters. The tree, friends, planted by water. It grows and it flourishes in good times and in bad. It does well in the rainy season when everything else is doing well, but it also does well in the dry season when everything else is drying around it because its roots run into a never-ending river of nourishment. Friends, this is what we become when we place our trust in God. When we declare our dependence on Him, when we sink our roots into the unending treasure of His faithful provision, this is what God wants to do in your life today. Today, God wants to release blessing. He wants to release his provision into your life. Maybe it's a, a dry, barren time, and he wants to, us to loose the assurance. He wants to loose an assurance of his direction and his guidance. He wants to pour that assurance of guidance and direction upon our lives. We simply just need to put our trust in Him. Amen? He longs to be our provider. He longs to be our way 
baker. And he's only waiting. He's only waiting for us to make our declaration of dependence upon him. So as we're going to celebrate Christmas this month, and we're going to be focusing on trust for the next two weeks, I would encourage us to really ask the Lord, Lord, I, I see the role that trust plays in the Christmas story. Lord, help me to trust you more as, as I go into a new year, as we close this year. Let, let, it, let that be the cry of our heart. Lord, help us to trust you more in the coming year. Let's pray together. Lord God, we just thank you today. We thank you today just for your direction, for your guiding, for your leading. Lord, we just pray that your word would grow within us and that we would choose today to put our trust in you. We give you glory, we give you praise in your name. Amen. Amen. Kevin's going to come and lead us in our closing hymn. It's number 78 in our number 75 sorry, in your hymn books Trust and Obey. Let's, uh, no? Okay, what number do you got Kevin? <laughs> well, if you turn to the hymn books, it's 349. 349. Okay. I don't know how we got there. Number 349. Let's stand and sing this together uh, in faith that we're declaring upon the Lord. And if you desire prayer, just make your way to the altar. I'd love to have the opportunity to pray with you. Bear with me. It's acapella. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign or a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no
Where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and